Joining me now for a look at the future of Afghanistan, Wahid Monawar, Senior Vice President at Zurich Partners. Um, let's kind of talk about that arc since we just mentioned it. Uh, in 2001, there seemed to be this enormous reservoir of goodwill. Uh, it just seemed like everybody was on board with this, uh, this effort in Afghanistan. And then things changed markedly over the years. Um, talk, about, talk to me, if you will, about that, that initial phase and where we are now internationally with Afghanistan. I think you're raising uh, an excellent point. Uh, if I could quote the, uh, the famous Chinese military strategist from six centuries, um, Sun Tzu, he said, no state will ever benefit from a prolonged warfare. So this 11 years, it had its ups and downs. But if you look into that, uh, Afghanistan has come, we have taken a country that had the semblance of, uh, from Old Testament to a country that is now almost a third world or a developing country. Uh, things have uh, changed drastically. Afghanistan has a, a strong national army, about uh, 350,000, in which there is a component of police, but 30,000 of that are special forces. So when the U.S. leaves, those special forces will come in and, 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 and do the work. Um, there's also this upward mobility in, in the Afghan society, which has uh, benefited uh, the, the, um, the allied uh, forces. Uh, as we uh, cater to, to Afghans, uh, Afghans have realized that you know, the Taliban do not offer an alternate uh, that is much better than what they have uh, seen in the last 10 years. Let me ask you about uh, what, what I hear from some people who have been in the region, that there, there is concern on the ground of the people living there that once the U.S. moves out, there's going to be this vacuum. They don't know what's going to happen. There's going to be instability. Is that uh, an accurate measure of how people feel there? Do you think that there's some truth in that? Well, there's one good thing that happened in the last 10 years. It's the level of communication. Uh, now, uh, most Afghans communicate because there is a mobile phone. Back in 2001, Afghanistan didn't even have one single mobile phone. Now, the farmers are communicating with farmers from the south to the north and from the east to the south. And this communication brings in awareness of what is the future uh, risk ahead for them. Uh, so I'm not so sure if the Taliban offer an, a, a solution that they don't already have. Uh, at first, uh, here in Washington, too, we don't have a clear strategy on how to deal with how the Taliban has been strengthened. It, it, that's the strategy with Pakistan. Pakistan has been uh, uh, dealing, uh, been a friend, but also uh, been, uh, been for supporting the Taliban. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that makes it really difficult to not have a clear strategy how to do that. Even though if we have the clear intelligence that you know the Taliban is, uh, the Pakistan is doing that help, we don't have a clear strategy because we don't want Pakistan to implode. Pakistan is also a very important country in that region. Let me ask you, but you bring up Pakistan, um, British Prime Minister, uh, uh, Cameron recently had these talks, and the leader of Afghanistan and Pakistan. He seemed very hopeful about these talks. Do you think the instability uh, will go away between these two countries after uh, the Western forces leave, or there's a, likely to continue? There's an important point here uh, one need to focus on is your transition as the U.S. leaves in 2014. There are two important uh, things that is happening in Afghanistan political calendar. The transition of U.S. forces, but also the election that's coming up in 2014. These two events will happen simultaneously. Afghans need to do to show to the world that they are, uh, have the ability to do this uh, transition on themselves, have uh, a, an election that is uh, acceptable to the Afghan people. Uh, I think last month, President Obama said that uh, he's uh, willing uh, to, to listen to the Taliban if Taliban has an office in, in Qatar. Mm -hmm. And that process is going uh, as it started uh, initiating uh, in its first phase uh, what the Taliban want. We still don't know clearly what they want. They want to change the constitution. But what kind of constitution they want? They want to have a constitution that has the Sharia in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are all questions that need to be answered as we progress toward uh, 2014. And there's still a lot of unanswered questions, but Wahid, thank you for coming in and offering your insights. Appreciate okay. it.